In a single word, the timing was divine. When a new video got uploaded to YouTube entitled OnlyFans and the sexualization of college girls from Girl Defined, a YouTube channel designed just for us God-honoring girlies with advice on how to live our most shame-based, boring, unsweetened oatmeal lives in order to please our parents and a God that may or may not exist. Then again, how else would you explain this new theological thorny crown of content hitting the internet just as I was wondering what kind of Christ-like musings our hosts, Bethany and Kristen, had been coughing up in their confessional lately. And good lord, did we hit a jackpot today. Now we get to bear witness as Girl Defined takes on the adult entertainment industry by mostly complaining about it, which is not what I would do. I would probably go undercover as an exotic dancer with a heart of gold, all to gather information for my hard-hitting news story about how pole dancing helped strengthen my core. Instead, uh, the grown adults of Girl Defined show us how this popular paid subscription social media site has been working to explicitly target innocent Christian college students by taking us through their empty table full of evidence, all of which points to one inevitable conclusion. Women who decide to make any amount of money on OnlyFans are either naive, confused, or stupid individuals. And they need to deactivate their accounts immediately if there's any hope of gaining exclusive members-only access to the pearly gates of heaven. Today, I'll be using actual statistics in order to play devil's advocate, just to provide a counterpoint to Kristen and Bethany's righteous ramblings while breastfeeding a baby. Their one-sided arguments sprung from a place of privilege, and of course, non-actionable advice on how a Christian can serve in a God-honoring way. So stop live streaming your spank sessions and pick out your favorite pilgrim dress. That way we can get into a moral high ground state of mind with the help of the sweetly unsalted words of Girl Defined on yet another super sin-busting, Satan-shunning installment of Clip Breakdown. <laughs> Hello, television viewers. My name is Nick. Thank you so much. That was too much. Thank you so much for joining me once again on my channel for another installment of Clip Breakdown. This is the playlist where we dive into our favorite movies, TV movies, and other such content here on the web, and we break it down like the people who do what they need to survive so that we can look at each individual clip and decide whether it is ordained by the ministry or a papal palpable pap smear. <laughs> by looking at each individual clip and deciding whatever I just said. I don't need to repeat myself. The point is, today we are looking at Girl Defined for the third time on my channel after their mm, very thoughtful musings on Halloween costumes or being a drag queen slash trans person if you're a coded bigot. And I'm sorry to say that if you're any other type of human on earth who acknowledges that they have a sexual aspect to their identity, this is going to be a little invalidating. But before we get into it, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. Turn on notifications. Turn on notifications. Turn on notifications. They always talk about how that's important. Oh, also I've got merch and a Patreon. You can access exclusive bonus content and uh, virtual watch parties. Think of Patreon as like the only fans for people who look kind of weird during sex. That's how I'm gonna describe my experience with it. No, I'm just kidding. But the similarities between Patreon and <laughs> OnlyFans are not well explained in this video because Girl Defined starts out their video by talking about their Patreon and then they don't bring up any similarities between it, even though that would probably be relatable to their audience because as you can imagine, Kristen and Bethany are not fans of OnlyFans, but also the OnlyFans who are fans on OnlyFans are only only going to hell. We are talking about OnlyFans. We are seeing college age girls especially jump on this platform to make money and a lot of them just aren't thinking of the future and the consequences. Well, we can't all be perfect and think ahead like you, Bethany McStephany. You clearly consider the future consequences of everything. And that's why you decided to reveal your baby and her full name in a video that also includes the keywords OnlyFans, sex, and college girls. I'm sure that only the most God-loving 
dating and adult attracted people are going to come across this Google search result for the rest of her life. Also, they can say that perhaps a lot of women who enter the commercial sex industry aren't thinking about their future, but that's a little bit dismissive of those who don't even have the luxury of thinking about their future because they're more focused on like their immediate survival, their own hunger and shelter or the needs of their families. That's how you know this entire video is specifically aimed at preventing young college students from feeling tempted to start posting on OnlyFans yet also have the privilege of choosing not to do that. Like maybe they have a lot of opportunity to find income in another way, but like what advice do you have for the women and people who choose to sell sexual content because they enjoy it or because it's all that they know how to do or because it's the only thing they can accomplish without additional resources to learn another trade. Are you going to offer those people a free computer course on how to sell self-righteous PDFs featuring advice on how to suck in a God-honoring way. I don't think so. I haven't heard it from you. Maybe people who aren't majority white privileged college girls don't even cross your radar right now. Maybe they're just destined for hell in your mind because they aren't already young, impressionable Christians who happen to look like you and also share your God-honoring urge to never think for themselves. That's how this comes off. It's a very one-sided argument. I get it. Girl Defined has their own audience and it's other Christian people, but that comes with its own bias where they are from a certain type of Christian community that is overprivileged if anything. Wealthy people with families who just want them to get married and not work. I'm not saying that doesn't come with its own pressure from a family to get married, but it's not a survival instinct kind of instigating thing where you're like, well, I can either sell my body in some way, which is n in no way shameful, or I can, you know, starve. That's what a lot of people in this country are faced with. And frankly, it's clear that Girl Defined does not take those people into consideration. It's like, it's for white girls with a choice. And I totally get it. I am white and I also am not a woman. I mean, I identify as non-binary, but I'm male presenting, which affords me plenty of male privilege. And I'm not saying that I understand fully the experience of being a woman or a woman of color. And of course, there are people on OnlyFans of that demographic who are also oppressed. My point is I don't presume to know that everybody else has the similar experience or choice or reasonings behind their decision to sell adult content, either in person or on OnlyFans. And I know I keep saying adult content, but that's because it's YouTube, baby. I gotta be careful. I can't say the word sex too often or the tooth fairy won't bring me a 20 for my lost molar. <laughs> and by the way, Bethany, mama, let's not talk too much about thinking ahead when it doesn't even seem like you thought too far ahead on this SV you interrogation room of a podcast studio. You didn't want to throw one of those plants in front of the visible electrical outlet on the wall or like, I don't know, not shoot underneath fluorescent lights flickering so much that it's actually distracting you from properly brainwashing your baby. Stop squirming around little one and just sit there with your tension headache and listen to mommy explain how sex is for sinners. You were born a tramp and a floozy, but you're lucky God loves you and God loves you and you better do everything you can not just screw that up, little one. Boop, 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 boop. What I noticed first off <laughs> in this video is the banding lights, which is a thing that will happen if you shoot under fluorescent lights. Uh, they call them like rolling lights or this like, it's like a flicker. If you speed it up, as you see in this B-roll, you can see the lights are moving down and down and down. It's not visible at normal speed speed, but like it will distress your eyes after a while of watching that. That's because fluorescent tube lighting in like most of the world, it's 50 Hertz in the North America and South America, it's 60 Hertz. Either way, you need to shoot at a frame rate that's divisible by that number, or each frame is going to capture an uneven number of blinks of that light. A fluorescent light is not full constant light. It's blinking at a rate that's too high for the naked eye to see, but you know, cameras are frame rates. It's not naked eye. So in a 60 Hertz AC area, you would want to shoot it something divisible by 60, either 30 or 60 or 120 and not a European standard, which would be like 29 point something. 
but uh, clearly our girls over here are shooting at a 50 hertz frame rate so you catch every fluctuation and when you speed it up you can really see like oh my god giving me a headache but before we talk about how uncouth it is to have a paid subscription service attached to your social media identity let's hear from the girls defined about their paid subscription service that's attached to their social media identity it is an amazing pdf download that we just released brand new release here at girl define in our shop which we now have an awesome digital shop online as well listen i could never judge somebody for talking with their hands and that's because i'm gay but are there any other church approved hand gestures you can use Kristen? maybe ask for a lesson from your all-knowing husband brother priest father because right now we're getting a lot of this i would call that the communion claw we're seeing it over and over again to the point where you almost snatched out your own hair extensions and clearly you burned your wrist on your curling iron but frankly i don't know how because the both of you look like your curls were done before you ever even plugged that thing in Kristen, are you faking another stigmata <laughs> Just so that youth pastor who plays the harmonica will splash holy water in your face again? For me, that's way too much work. When I'm really attracted to a guy, I just straight up tell them to spit in my mouth. What? That's clearly where the urge is coming from, right? I think God makes it so that if we listen to our bodies, it's telling us exactly what it needs. And it's almost always having a stranger spit in our mouth. Corinthians 420. Our new shop? <laughs> that was my favorite part. Anyway, they're selling these printable pamphlets about love and sex. Can't wait to learn about sex from you ladies. <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything beyond that. It would be too personal, too mean. I'm not trying to be personal, I'm just trying to be mean. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Anyway, Girl Defined goes on to explain what the social media platform of OnlyFans is, which just for all of us to know is a paid subscription service that you can start on their platform so that your fans or your online audience can choose to pay a monthly amount that you set for additional content, bonus rewards, they can chat with you, they can tip you. Essentially it's Patreon, although again, they won't make that comparison because they're not associated with something not good. And to be fair, Patreon does not allow the level of adult content that OnlyFans does. OnlyFans was meant to be purely for artists and creators of all types to post stuff online that is monetizable and not limited to the restrictions of other public platforms like YouTube or Instagram or what have you. But for that reason, especially during the pandemic, it kind of blew up as a place for adult content creators or people who are formerly in a more studio-based adult entertainment industry could post online and make money even though obviously studios with insurance and you know unions and all of that were not able to work because of COVID. The thing that I find so repulsive about it is that OnlyFans advertises itself as like a social media platform where you can come on and show your amazing creative artwork like your photography and like your amazing skills. Uh, that's what people are doing. Recording an anonymous hookup with an iPhone that's covered in lube is still photography and figuring out the distribution of three penises between two holes is an amazing skill. Whether or not you remain conscious, which you almost certainly will not once you realize internally how far your soft tissue can stretch. I don't have an OnlyFans, but I feel like I'm, maybe it's like a wasted opportunity. Oh my God, these rolling lights are giving me the biggest headache. Ugh, that baby's gonna grow up all f***ed up and cross-eyed. <laughs> no, I'm just getting f***ed up with permanent scoliosis. <laughs> Not me willing scoliosis on an infant. I'm just kidding. Only fans. Be my only fan. And don't tell the audience about that. <laughs> anyway, our girls define try to make the point that OnlyFans is targeting young women, especially throughout the pandemic, with you know no evidence to prove that. But also it's like a hub, a hotbed for immoral activity, for sexual repulsion, for things that are not safe. For work. Essentially becoming a sexual object is an experience of being dehumanized. Some of the most atrocious acts in human history have been committed as a result of dehumanizing another person or people group. That's a really good point, and it applies perfectly to OnlyFans and nothing else. For example, in the 18th century, when OnlyFans was used to justify the colonization of Africa, along with the exploitation of countless indigenous people, that was all OnlyFansianity. And wasn't it the place? Playboy bunnies who relocated all of those Playboy priests so that they could continue working for the Playboy clergy in different states despite 
despite the widespread accusations of mm, eh, ooh, sex abuse, I'm not saying that nobody has ever posted content to OnlyFans and then experienced regret from either like harassment or some sort of objectification that they did not expect. But how are you gonna say that's the most egregious acts of violence when there are people within your own church who have used a child's faith against them to commit even more heinous acts? Like, come on, dummy. Ugh, so gross. For the OnlyFans thing, I mean, wouldn't the solution come from stronger anti-harassment laws for people who are working in the commercial sex trade? Not from two YouTube Christian girlies who tell them they should delete their accounts by guilting them and reminding them that Jesus taught them to fear their own sexuality or whatever. I just wanna know, like, are you hearing yourself, sister, sister? Sister, sister as in two nuns, not Tia and Tamara. If harmful comments and online stalking are enough misconduct for you to call the whole institution evil, then you both should have been compelled to hang up your rosary beads and burn down the church you were baptized in as soon as you were old enough to read. Otherwise, it is very hypocritical, in my opinion, for you to say that every consenting adult who participates in sex work or the adult entertainment industry will inevitably regret the decision for the rest of their lives. I think you're thinking about having a baby. And congratulations, Bethany, on your new baby. I'm glad that you're happy that you finally have a girl. It's weird that you even care what gender your babies are because that could all change once they're conscious enough to realize who they are. So I know, I'm gonna make the conservatives really piss themselves on this one. I don't give a Oh, I hate you conservatives. Oh, you suck. <laughs> oh, what's wrong with me today? I'm mad. The girls defined are pretty upfront about how they're hoping this video reaches people who either are on OnlyFans posting content or who are thinking about it and don't necessarily consider the consequences. And maybe you'll just rethink this as a Christian woman and make decisions that will be in line with who God created you to be as his beautiful daughter that he cares for so much. Uh, sounds like those decisions aren't gonna pay my bills anytime soon. And I I could go on OnlyFans right now and pay my rent thanks to some guy who also likes to call me his beautiful daughter that he cares for very much. And to me, that's my Lord and Savior. It's America. We all get to choose what God is. Ariana Grande believes that God is a woman. So Girl Defined can believe that God is an angry father figure. And I can believe that God is a horny father figure who I know only by the online display name Daddy Dawn. That's just a hypothetical situation, but it feels right and I am going to start referring to all of the generous members of my Patreon community as Daddy Don. I love you, Daddy Don. Please stay subscribed to my Patreon. Something about you. That's mixed up songs. Now we get into uh, Kristen and Bethany's assertion that in some way, OnlyFans has been specifically and nefariously targeting young college girls who would otherwise be reading the Bible and convincing them that they can like pay their expenses through OnlyFans, to which I say every social media platform that pays you is trying to recruit people, and I don't see any more of a hand on OnlyFans' part to make it a specific demographic like what they're trying to appeal to right now. Whether it was their advertising or word of mouth, people talking about it, but clearly there was some strategy on the part of this company to recruit these young college people who were desperate for work, and it's advertised like you're going to somehow be able to pay your college tuition. Recruiting college aid students, promising to pay their tuition, rampant accusations of sexual assault against women. Mama, I think you're confusing OnlyFans with the United States Army, which I'm not gonna lie, also seems like it might be able to facilitate a certain amount of internalized eroticism, but that's like just based on my memories of watching Jake Gyllenhaal in the movie Jarhead. But you're right, you know, just like OnlyFans, young people need to really consider the lifelong consequences of joining the American military, such as getting shot with a gun or blown up by a landmine. Is all that really worth it just to get a degree in technology while also, I guess, protecting the nation's dependence on fossil fuel? Not for me. I would rather sell my I would not want to spend one night in a tent if I could instead get online and show people my feet if they want to pay $4.99 a month. And you know, I'm still doing the country a service because they have something to pay to. Actually, I'm going to add that to my Patreon as a new tier. $4.99, the Daddy Dawn feet Ding! For real though, I have looked through all of the public facing advertising from OnlyFans that I could find. Meta even lets you look through all of the paid ads that they're running on social media platforms. 
If you go to the page transparency section, you can see how they're trying to appeal to Instagram and Facebook users. And I never once see any mention of the word college or making any sort of income claim about how you can pay off your tuition or other bills. Instead, I mean, yeah, the ads are clearly targeting content creators of all kinds, never once mentioning adult content because that would not get on Facebook. And again, the original intention of the platform was for people to shared paid content of all kinds. And naturally, if you're going to market a platform to aspiring influencers, you'll go after people aged 20 to 39 because the average age of a full-time content creator is 29 years old in this country. Like, it's also, that's not the age of college aged people. So where is your proof? Bethany, Kristen, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen said there was a clear strategy on the part of the company to recruit young college students, but you're showing us no proof of this. You're showing us no proof of this. And they actually don't cite a single source of this extensive research that Girl Defined did throughout the entire video. Not in the description, not in line, parenthetical, and whatever. I found the articles they're speaking about because they're like the first few to come up against OnlyFans when you Google it, but it's also impressive how they ignore the second half of every sentence that might also provide a counterpoint or a caveat to any of these statistics. So even though these grown women defined are bragging throughout the video that most of their points are from people who were on OnlyFans and not necessarily anything to do with being Christian or scripture, the one-sided perspective and vague statistics make me feel like this argument is a lot more biased than they want it to seem, informed mainly by their Christian morality and a desire to save souls, rather than like a genuine concern about making all industries, workforces more safe for women, both physically and mentally. Because in, in my estimation, there are other verticals in which women are at more risk than being a digital sex worker, like being a physical sex worker, where if you are a trans woman of color, the statistics are much higher that you're going to face harm or some sort of social stigma than a white Christian girl on OnlyFans. And I just don't know that they're making that delineation strong enough. In my opinion, I don't think that OnlyFans is inherently evil, like some people might say, but I also don't think it's like a perfect vacuum in which equality reigns. It's almost like a reflection of society in itself. And I can't help but notice that there is less stigma for the men on the platform. It isn't fair, that's all I can say. But it makes sense because nothing is fair in this country, so why should this? Income and wealth inequality in the United States is higher than almost any other country in the entire world. Like to begin with, it's very unfortunate that 90% of the American workforce lost money in total earnings, while the top 1% just got richer, even though productivity is rising, like we're all accomplishing more for whoever we work for. Many of us are aware of the statistic that women make 83 cents per dollar that a cis non-Hispanic white man would make. But it's really important to like consider the United States and how it's built on a legacy of slavery and racist economic policies. And you have to acknowledge that the disparate incomes are even wider among racial groups. A black woman is on average earning 63 cents on the dollar compared to a non-Hispanic white man. And that was only the data as of 2020. The gap has only gotten wider over the years and I get it, it's not something we can snap our fingers and undo. One step in that process is bringing attention to it. But more importantly, we need to just invest in those communities, the communities of color or communities that are disproportionately affected by wage inequality. Every year, there are small wins that I think if we just publicize those more, like for example, 50% of Americans don't have $400 to handle an unexpected life emergency. And having said that, like if we look at the over 100 guaranteed income pilot programs that have been introduced since 2017, we see that they help. We don't just need to expand those programs, we need to expand on that kind of thinking. We're one of the most wealthy countries in the world. People should not have to struggle to make ends meet. We put so much individual responsibility on people for things that aren't in their control because of an unequal system. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. We need to ask our national representatives to help rewrite policies. That way we can help ensure that every member of this country has the resources they need to enjoy their lives. Next, we get into further assumptions about 
who the audience of this video is, which feel a little closed minded. And they make you think, oh, OK, you're you're this beautiful young woman. You're posting bikini pics on your Instagram. In fact, one article, um, the girl was talking about that. I'm already posting these you know, bikini pics over on Instagram. Why not just come over on OnlyFans and make some money off of it? But at the end of the day, the amount of money that she made was so little. Well, assuming that this OnlyFans college co-ed exists, since again, no sources were cited, I have to assume that she wasn't an economics major majors since she doesn't seem to understand the super sexy concept of supply and demand. <sighs> Sorry, I didn't mean to make that sound, but I'm currently in a situation where my fetish is being financially dominated. See, I give my state and federal governments all the money they want, and in turn, they give me discriminatory, discriminatory laws, laws, a, a broken, broken medical, medical care, care system, system, and, and like, like once in a while, they, they might, might fill a pothole on, on the, the streets street that, that run through the, the richest, richest Neighborhood. neighborhood. Give me taxation without representation, Lady Liberty. Make me gag on your big metal torch. Does this unnamed article girl realize that we can find pictures of women in bikinis in the Sears catalog? So unless somebody already brings with them a ready-made following of subscribers like Bella Thorne, who made a million dollars in her first week on OnlyFans, obviously it's going to be hard to keep subscribers who want adult content using the same images that would be allowed on on a public social media site that's highly moderated like Instagram. Even creators on OnlyFans who create explicit content have trouble competing with the rest of the internet where the same types of photos and videos are mostly available for free. You have to really distinguish yourself as having something exclusive to offer on there or more frequently new content to offer on there or like the cult of personality, like any other type of influencer, including Girl Defined. I think that they think that they have a personality the personality is a lot to me though. It's like, you have the personality of that girl in college where I'm like, no thanks. No, you cannot eat with me in the dining hall. <laughs> But just to give you an idea of how much money people are actually making on here, because it sounds so much better than it really is. So the average account earns just $220 per month. Okay. And what are the estimated earnings for an OnlyFans creator that's below average? For example, if I were to go fully nude, but make no attempt to cover up the pus filled bed sores that cover my back. I've tried using concealer, but the infection seems to just keep eating the makeup and it becomes even stronger. It kind of feels like a lot of the internet's sisterhood of Christianity love to skew this type of data, whether they're shaming sex workers or trying to convince you about how much money you could make by joining their team selling Arbon. Here, they really want you to feel like the term average OnlyFans creator as your everyday God-fearing Christian university student, when average actually refers to the mathematical mean of OnlyFans users, meaning the total amount of earnings made through OnlyFans divided by the total amount of users on the platform. In 2021, influencersmarketinghub.com put that average number at 142, $142. But it also then goes on to clarify, quote, however, it must be pointed out that one reason for this inequality is that the majority of OnlyFans accounts have no fans at all. They aren't set up for serious broadcasting. So there are many more inactive accounts than active. People who just signed up trying to check it out and decided, no, it's not for me. So those zero dollar accounts are dragging down the average of people who actually are trying to earn money on the platform. And in my opinion, a more accurate number reporting the earnings would be the average of all active accounts, where active is either defined as users who treat OnlyFans as their main source of income, or maybe users who post at least once per day, since most websites cite that as like the best practices for somebody who wants to seriously earn. It could be any number of ways that you define an active user, but you have to tell us that. We don't know from this video what the study is referring to. So either way, Mother Mary of Holds Her iPhone and Sister Sally Holds Her Baby are not giving us the information that people would actually need to make an informed decision for themselves and they also provide no good way of fact checking their information. The girls defined then go on to explain how it's not so easy and glamorous 
to be an OnlyFans creator, which to me is something that I learned well into the pandemic. Like I know plenty of people who make a full-time career as OnlyFans creators of adult content. And it seems equally, if not more challenging than what I do making content for YouTube that's technically ad friendly. Somehow, thank God, maybe not this video. Hopefully though, cross your fingers. If you see an ad for Grammarly, then we're in the clear. Anyway, it's hard work, no matter how you slice it, to try to bring in an audience of any type of content on a regular basis on the internet where there's nothing but content. Instead of trusting God to provide, they're turning to what they believe is a surefire way to make some extra dough. And initially it may work well for them, but before yeah. long, they're fighting to keep their subscribers, engaging in hundreds of personal messages, selling private pictures to subscribers and compromising their standards again and again. Yeah. Sis, that statement could have easily been about you if you changed the selling private pictures phrase to selling pious printables about how to find a husband. Cause that's what you promoted at the beginning of this for your members only site. I just wanna be real, girl to find. These sisters are not religious leaders who make their salary from the clergy. That means they're private citizens who make their living by selling content and goods and services that appeal to a very small but passionate fan base of religious women who have their views. If OnlyFans means that you're selling out your sexuality, then Girl Defined means that they're selling out the human trait of spirituality to make a profit instead of the human trait of being horny on the internet. It's it's basically the same thing. Also, just looking at the view counts on their channel, I think it's safe to say that Girl Defined is also fighting for every single subscriber they can get. And so am I. And so is every content creator who cares about the longevity of their business, right? Dude. Being a content creator means caring about keeping followers, gaining new ones, getting engagement. That's just the business. And on their third part of that sentence, I can't say for sure that Girl Defined has ever compromised their standards so that they could earn money or be profitable. But I mean, their most viewed videos are the ones with inflammatory titles that they know will be divisive like this one and will likely draw in commentary from other YouTube channels like this one. And also this podcast is literally them reading unsighted information off of their iPhones in a completely unedited hour of repetitive points from people who seem a little more interested in the baby on their laps when and if they're even paying attention at all. My hands raised. I guess you never wondered that. <laughs> My own world for a second. I, was, I don't know where I was. You were gone. She was gone. I was just gone. Well, damn, Bethany, save that new mommy brain fog for the Sunday Bible study. We're trying to prevent people from living their lives freely over here. Every video seems to have some passive aggressive dig at poor Bethany. And I'm a part Part of that. Name that song in the comments. Name that Broadway musical. And then just the sexualization, obviously, it's all based on sex. Literally abusing sex, misusing it, mistreating it. Is mistreating sex just like whenever it's done in a way that Jesus would find weird? Because in that case, I feel fine. I don't think Jesus was the prude you make him out to be. I mean, he was executed wearing nothing but a jock strap. Out here in Palm Springs, that's the most common outfit that people are wearing when found dead in the desert. So in that that way, we're more like Jesus than anybody in your southern, suburban, church donation, basket-believing community, honey. Jesus was a jockstrap pig, and he's an awesome jockstrap pig. He likes to wear it. Some risks involved with being on OnlyFans if you weren't smart enough to think of these yourself. Leaked content and piracy, people taking your content, people using it as blackmail. I mean, putting your hope in the fact that it's going to stay private is a very naive perspective, oh, yeah. honestly. I mean, people hack into like the most secure things in, in the world. Bethany, don't give people any ideas. They could hack into your daughter's baby monitor at night and read her the poetry of Sappho's or a children's book from that gay kid on Glee. Yes, of course, putting explicit content on the web, even behind a paywall comes with a certain risk of people pirating it or leaking it to public websites. And there are also cases of people using someone's OnlyFans content in order to blackmail the person as a form of retaliation, or as the legal system likes to call them respectively, extortion and revenge porn. Which by the way, those things are illegal in all 50 states being tried as up to a class A felony. My point being, 
It seems really backwards for the girl to find girls to get online and try to basically dissuade every human on earth from using OnlyFans or participating in sex work, which is a fool's errand because it's something that's been around since the dawn of recorded history. Why can't the focus instead be on raising members of society, particularly men if we're looking at statistics, who know how to resolve their feelings of anger and rejection without resorting to this type of violence against women or intimate partners of any gender? Why can't Girl Defined at least bring up sexual blackmail with some inkling of sympathy for people who are victims of that, rather than implying that they brought it on themselves when no, people do the work that they do because they need to in order to get through the day, get through the week, get through the month in this godforsaken country that is too expensive to live in. Like you can work two jobs and still be in poverty you if you think that it's my fault when I resort to sex work and then people leak that and try to use it against me to prevent getting other jobs down the line. Like the American dream is a nightmare. And if you don't admit that, then you are truly a product of privilege, which I mean, I was born with privilege too, but I have enough sense to know that other people have it much worse than me. And I just feel like this whole video is targeting people who have the same or a higher level of privilege than me or Kristen or Bethany. And it's not fair because that's not who's going to be exposed to it. And it's certainly not the only type of oppressive group that's going to use this as validation to continue oppressing another group. Talk about how it's not right to spread or blackmail or leak these photos of other people. Talk about the information or legal options or support resources that are available to people who experience that. It's the least you could do. It's the very least you could do. I mean, you couldn't even curl your hair right for this piece of shit. That's the very least you could do. Oh, I didn't mean to get personal with it, but it feels personal to me because I care deeply about other people and I don't think that sex work should be stigmatized and I don't think that is fair when people who never had, were faced with that life or death decision of how am I going to make money cast judgment or act like, you know, girls who are already in college, which requires a high degree of privilege might resort to it. And it doesn't matter why. You should be allowed to work whatever job you want or need to do. But, but actually no, because if you, done this or you've ever thought about doing this, you might just not be that intelligent. Because it's virtual, I think we have this this naive sense that because it's online, it's not me, right? It's like my other identity. It's the work I do. Maybe there's even another name that you use. It's not really who I am and it's not going to impact my real life. What? This was the same argument you made during your God honoring Halloween costume video, explaining why I couldn't go out as a slutty lizard, even though that's my ultimate dream. I think it can be good. it can be easy to forget like oh it's what you're wearing for Halloween like is what you're wearing it can be easy to think like oh it's just a costume like I wouldn't actually wear this in real life but yeah. it's just a costume so it's kind of different but does Girl Defined really believe that as non-Christians we will just create an alt Twitter account or put on a wig from the party store and think we've entered the f***ing matrix? Actually, clearly, this advice, the videos, are all intended for young Christian viewers. So I guess that's the compartmentalization they're expected to do, especially since certain activities included in their daily lives are completely forbidden by the Bible, while other activities that are not specifically mentioned are demonized. All from a book of poorly translated fairy tales. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, I can see the mental gymnastics at work. You're gonna win. You're gonna win gold, honey. Many adults who aren't struggling to adhere to a self-conflicting moral code are able to recognize that the things they do online or while wearing a Halloween costume could also impact the rest of their lives. Like it's, it's condescending to try and explain it as though the people who make money through OnlyFans or adult industries are just too naive to realize that this content could ever be used against them. Obviously, maybe they could consider that people have thought about this and yet they still had no better option when it comes to like earning the income they need or they refuse to not live their truest lives because it's something that they enjoy and feels empowering to them and they're not gonna avoid it just because of the stigma surrounding it or the fear that people are so immoral that they would leak private information and threaten somebody's existence just to cause them harm. Who are we blaming here? The victim. That's who you're blaming, ladies. Girl-defined ladies. Another way you know that the girls defining women are speaking 
speaking to a very narrow audience, one that's following a very similar life path to theirs, is the limited number of career options that they can even think of as an example for what women need to worry about protecting. It really can interfere with your future goals. So if you are wanting to work with children one day, maybe as a teacher, is this something that I want the children that I'm teaching? If I'm able to some, you know, I'll get like that teaching job. Ma, I don't want to be a teacher what kind of little red schoolhouse logic are you coming at me with even if i were a teacher it's not my responsibility to keep my students from accessing adult only websites when they're at home on their ipads it's up to the adult guardians of those children to prevent them from accessing adult only areas of the internet because that is exposing them to predators and scammers and traffickers who pose a very real risk to their safety a far riskier risk than seeing my nipples on full display while somebody f**ks me. <laughs> and tell that to your kids after school today. And honestly, even if I were a teacher and my students did somehow get a hold of my private photos that showed me in some sort of sexual situation, I would hope that we are working towards a world where parents are raising their kids without the puritanical belief that people who show their bodies are immoral or naughty because that's not a healthy perspective. It's actually the same perspective that has made it so so trans and queer people are not allowed to get jobs teaching children for decades up until the very same day of today. Kids should be taught that it doesn't matter what a person does as long as it's safe and healthy and consensual in their own home and it has no effect on whether or not they should be seen as trusted or a good person. It only furthers children from the normalization that these underserved communities or oppressed minorities deserve. Teach them that having a healthy sex life is normal and that sharing somebody's private photos that weren't meant for anybody to see is wrong. Go even further and tell them that they should be able to follow their dreams and explore their passions and you will support them no matter what it is as long as you're sure of their safety and happiness even if they end up in the sex industry. But some Christians will never admit that because the love that they give their children actually is conditional, which is sad and also, uh, what is the word? Opposite of what Jesus Christ taught in his little fucking book. Like, are you dumb, Pastor Dan? Just love your kids. That's all I can, like, weird how that's what comes out of this. But there you go. You might think, I don't know anyone that's on. And that's mm. what they've said in all of the research yeah. that we've come across is that pretty much everyone keeps it secret. Yeah, probably because people like you do nothing but perpetuate the stigma and judgment around all kinds of sex work. Rather than opening your mind to the idea that for some people it's a necessity or even something that they find healthy and empowering, you don't believe them when they tell you this. You know who else might be keeping their OnlyFans account a secret? Mm, most of the men at your church. So they can log on at night and watch videos of dudes railing each other right before telling their wives how hot they look in those ankle length dresses that they're gonna wear to Sunday services. I'm not saying every heterosexual religious person is secretly gay, but how many times have anti-gay politicians been exposed for engaging in same sex sex work or in general having a gay secret life. It's like people project so hard onto the things that they're afraid of in themselves. And to act like this situation would be immune from that phenomenon is it's godly stupid. It's ungodly stupid. Daddy Don would never stand for this. So no matter mm -hmm. where you're coming from right now, I don't care if you've been on OnlyFans or you've never, like we all need yes. the saving grace of Jesus. We all need his sacrifice and his resurrection. Really, Bethany, how? How do I need it? How is it going to change my life? If I needed to find a way to pay my bills tomorrow, how would that help me in a way that f selling a picture of my ass would not. I need you to explain that to me instead of just vibrating that baby up and down so fast like as a can of paint. I repent of that. I want to walk in a way that honors you, that glorifies you, that reflects my life as a redeemed daughter of God. Don't do it alone though. You know, we're all about mentorship. Find that godly woman that you can you bring her alongside you in that journey um, and invite her into that. You mean like the cashier at Hobby Lobby? Okay, I'll just be like, Barbara, I noticed you said have a blessed weekend. Will you walk beside me on my path to not posting any more videos about cake farting? I keep getting ants in all of my anus cavities. <laughs> You're right, Definition Girls. I am really feeling more like a redeemed daughter of God and less like a hungry d pig slut monster from Planet Sex. Daddy John is an awesome Daddy John. He loves to spank me. Let's wrap it up with a lovely bookend about what we've learned today. 
I hope this message has been encouraging. Yes, I had no idea that God was so against OnlyFans and you've fully encouraged me to sign up for Just For Fans instead. It's basically the same thing, but it was started by a gay muscle bear and it takes a lower percentage of my earnings. Just trying to be healthy, just trying to be Christ-like. I'm thinking of growing my hair out and having a group dinner at a really long table. Later on, I might get naked and let the haters nail me to a board in the desert. Thanks, dictionary ladies. Couldn't have done it without cha. And that's all we have to say about Girl Defined on OnlyFans. I hope I've made it clear how this is the type of one-sided perspective that if you grew up in this world of Christianity or unstyled hair, feels very convincing, right? But that's because they, they've done the research, but, but you're not. So take that to the Scholastic Book Fair and shove it up, you untelevised I'm just kidding. Do what you want with it. But thank you so much for listening, and I uh, hope that you'll join me once again on another episode of Clip Breakdown. But most importantly, I would love to have you give this video a big thumbs up if you want to see even more religious cringe content decoded. And if you've been here for a while or you're new to the channel, I would love to have you click that subscribe button right over here. That way you never miss new videos from me. I upload two new ones every week. I've also got Morch and a Patreon where you can access exclusive watch parties and bonus episodes. Also hit that notification bell icon if you want to be the first to know when I've uploaded an exclusive X-rated members only advertising friendly monetizable piece of video for you. You guys are all the greatest. Thank you so much for being my daddy Don with the big today. I will see you next time. Mwah!